Today we're taking a little walk through history and seeing how I have developed my apple and cinnamon mead recipe to where it is today. Let's get started. So what I have here are four different years of this mead recipe, or I guess development of it. We started in 2017. I'll tell you the recipes and stuff as we go along. This is a 2017 version, so mead number two that I ever made. This is a 2018 version. This is a 2019 version, and this is a 2020 version. Now we're in 2022. This is kind of where I landed, and I've made some minor tweaks, which I'll talk about my full on 2022 version in a little bit, but basically five years of this recipe. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of just start at the beginning of this recipe. This is the 2017 version, and I'm gonna go ahead and un unwrap and uncork. All right, so this, wow, that's fragrant. <laughs> Sorry, this is the 2017 version. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it. It's obviously darker, clear bottle, means that we can see it already. It is very clear, and I did not do anything to try and clear it. I think time has just honestly helped it in aging. It's five years old at this point. Here is my base recipe for what this used. It was three pounds of Nature Nate's honey. Um, Lauvin K1V1116 from, from Lauvin. Three pounds of red delicious apples, which um, I'm not a fan of those apples for this brew, nowadays at least. Started in August, 2017. I don't have my gravities. Um, I did not start off doing that, bad on my end. But I believe it, I mean, I started with three pounds, so we're setting probably at like a 13, 12, I'll say 12 to 14% ABV. It went dry. I did not do any back sweetening, no stabilizing. So very clear, very nice looking. I introduced the apples into the, I believe the primary in this one. I threw it, yeah, I threw them in with that primary. So in the Red Delicious, so this has a lot of um, warm honey character, you really get a lot of the floral side coming out with time that has really helped exaggerate the floralness. It's got a sweet aroma, which is nice. Not a ton of apple presence, I will say. And not a ton of cinnamon. I'm a little bit underwhelmed by the amount of cinnamon. Ooh, it's very smooth. Huge body. Oh, it's like, it's juicy. The, the traditional honey side is super nice. I will say I really enjoy the um, floral characteristics I get out of this honey. It is, I mean, five years old now, so it doesn't have a, um, much, if any, heat at all. That The apple character kind of comes, as a, it's a later wave that hits me. It's not immediate. It's definitely, um, definitely a... I feel like it's like LaCroix. You know, LaCroix has like um, a hint of said fruit. This has a hint of apple to it. The cinnamon might be like more of a feeling, I feel like, than an actual um, taste. Age has been really kind to this. I do think that it's juiciness, it's pretty full mouth, mouth feel, and um, the floral value just popping out really makes it nice. Underwhelmed on apple character. Would not call this an apple mead necessarily. Um, and cinnamon is just not really there either. So what did I learn from this one after you know going into this next thing? I, I had this one and I remember going, this is really good. What do I wanna change? So my next iteration, I said, well, I don't really like red delicious apples. They're kind of a not great apple, frankly. And so I decided let's change that, of course. Let's use a different kind of apple. So we jump on and we go to the next one. This is the 2018 version. Okay, so in, in 2018, I said, let's change it up. Let's start to try and get a little more um, sweetness within this. Let's also try and use a different kind of apple. So this used gala apples and more, hopefully more prominent cinnamon. Um, this one is 14% ABV. I did start taking some gravity readings, so good on me. And looks like this. 
So comparing the two, obviously honey varietal changes. The 2020 version, or excuse me, 2017 is a little darker based off the honey. This is lighter. They're both clear, which is very nice. Quite enjoy that. So uh, the exact recipe for this one is right here. So this used uh, Dutch gold clover honey, K1V1. Again, um, I, I kind of liked the characters that got there. And um, it was 10 pounds of, this was a five gallon batch. I used 10 pounds of gala apples this time. One cinnamon stick. Uh, I did include my apples in the secondary and I, I back sweetened this one with half a pound of honey. I believe that I also stabilized and did that thing. So let's go ahead and get a check on this one. 2018. Ooh, different honey uh, warmth. This one had a lot of warm, yeah, super uh, dark floral notes. This one has way more bright presence. You get more cinnamon on the nose, more definitely more apple um, apple-y, bright apple character. And I think that's attributing partly to the change of apples. Um, one fact is the kind of apple you use affects a lot of the brew. Here we go. Oh yeah, not, not as sweet as I remember. It's got a very, um, I don't want to say tropical-y. It's got a more juicy fruitiness to it. Almost I mean, it, it tastes a little bit like juice itself. You get more honey on the nose than you do the actual uh, beverage. There is definitely the cinnamon character. I believe um, using a cinnamon stick for, I don't remember how long. I didn't keep great notes on this, but I feel like the cinnamon stick was on for maybe like a month, which is a lot for what I normally do now. Way brighter honey, uh, way, way brighter apple character. I like gala apples. I've kind of started using them more it's definitely a uh, lacking sweetness. Sweetness would help bolster up the hunt, the apple character. The apple character itself is like, an, it's still a, an essence of it. It's a more prominent essence, but it is not to me extremely apple. -y. It's not like I'm taking a bite out of an apple, not necessarily like you need that. I did, um, with putting these into the secondary, the apples in the secondary, you are allowing a little bit of re-fermentation on skins, which adds some tannin. The only tannin adjustment there was, was that. Okay. So ooh, it also has some, that, that clover honey has a bit of mintiness to it, which is interesting. So then I made this one and I don't, I wasn't totally pleased with it. Um, I remember that I liked the apple character growing. I liked the cinnamon character growing, but then I lost, I thought back sweetening would help this continue to grow and get better. So I decided to do something new. I did switch honey characters or honey varietals again. So this is the 2019 version. So the honey character varietal change was just something I, I wondered what would happen if I used avocado blossom honey. So that's why this one's so dark. It clearly has a, I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever used avocado blossom honey, but it is, it is literally this dark all the time. Uh, the recipe for this one, this one is three years old at this point was, so this one used a combination of apples. Um, I used of course, avocado blossom, honey, as I mentioned, honey, crisp apples, gala apples and pink lady apples in combination cinnamon stick. And then I also used the QA 23 yeast. So I, I swapped yeast because I liked what was happening with the K one V one, but I also realized it is a very strong yeast. It goes up to 18%. It's intended for like high gravity brewing, which means that can sometimes blow off important characters and flavors. So I'd switched to the QA 23 which I had heard at the time was notably good for apple and Malik based fruits. So I switched to it and we have this. Ooh, yeah, that's, so the um, honey and the darkness of the honey with the cinnamon plus this like the apple characters we have make this feel uh, a little more pie esque. It's kind of got like a cooked or uh, Maillard. What is it? Yeah, Maillard reaction. Whenever you like cook the apples. Yeah, I love this aroma. It feels like a candle. I mean, it smells so good. 
Here we go. Okay. Very, I mean, it's dry. I did not back sweeten this one. Um, I think I was like, oh, I like it where it's at. Like the characters are developed nice and it has this uh, perceived sweetness. Well, the sweetness to me right now is not enough to help push forward the apple character. But the, the combinations, the cinnamon plus the, the uh, dark honey roastiness is really nice. The, the thing I learned from this one that I really liked that I took forward to the next version was the combination of apples. Using a combination to get a varietal of characters from them. And uh, I don't know that I used Pink Lady in my next iteration, but Gala and Honeycrisp have become two of my favorites to use in this brew. I also enjoyed what was happening with the QA23, but I don't know that it is what I settled on. I gotta look and see. <laughs> yeah, this next one I actually switched back to K1V1 because I was like, I'm ready to go back. And uh, I don't know that I liked all the characters coming out of the QA23. I don't, I don't feel like it preserved enough of the Apple character as I was getting in previous versions. So I switched back to that one. Again, I don't know if that's the best choice. There's obviously a lot of yeast for this recipe. This one's not bad, needs some sweetness. I still learned that lesson from these two, from the 2018 and 19 versions, is it needs a little sweetness. There's no dry sizer in this case that works well. The cinnamon just kind of takes over. So, that led us to 2020. So we had, we've gone through 2017, 2018, 2019, and here's 2020. All right, so this one looks super nice, very clear. This one is where I think, if, if we're engaging on me developing this recipe, over time, let's say this started at 50% greatness, we kind of reached, we kind of went all over the board. And I took my lessons I learned from each one. So it was like 50% there. 2018 hit, came around. Um, I think I learned and got up to about 65% with a cup with a not yeast change, but an apple change, maybe a little bit of process change. 2019, I think I went backwards in time and I was like, okay, I didn't like what I did with the different honey character, different yeast change. So I went down to like 40%. This right here, I'll go and tell you right now probably setting at around 85%. I was almost there as far as development is concerned. So, looks really good. Here's the recipe on screen right now. It used alpha alpha honey, which was a little bit different. A combination of apples. I used, again, pink lady apples, uh, gala apples, and Fuji apples, spring water, uh, the cinnamon sticks. I added two of those cinnamon sticks for this five gallon recipe, which I have since then upped my amount of cinnamon I add in. And then I back sweetened with more alfalfa blossom honey. So the combination of apples here was very helpful. Again, return back to the K1V116. Here we go. A little more muted nose, uh, get a, a okay amount of floral, very bright kind of has a little more acid on the nose. Oh, this is setting at 9% ABV. It literally tastes like an a like apple juice with floral character. It's just so smooth. The cinnamon is like a light, it's not the most predominant um, in your face amount of cinnamon, which is fine, honestly. I have since upped my cinnamon stick values and amounts, and I'll talk about that in a second, but there's a nice little bit of cinnamon in there with a ton of apple fruitiness. And again, combinations of apples. If you're gonna make an apple mead, um, you could use juice as your base, which again, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that in a second, how that changes things and how that changed things for this right here. But what I've found is fermenting on the skins with apples actually helps add a little bit of tannic value. Uh, when you ferment on the skins, make sure that those skins, like you actually kind of wash the fruit a little bit because sometimes um, some supermarkets will put a, a little 
small amount of wax. It's like edible wax, so if you eat the skin, it's not gonna hurt you, but that wax goes on the apple to help preserve it better. And if you don't get that wax off, then you're going to have that mess up your brew. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Yeah, but the, I mean, the amount of honey to apple character, you know, combination is just so nice. I learned from this one that sweetness helped, back sweetening really helped this recipe for sure, because I finally did it, finally did it right, I should say. But I also, I realized, hey, I need more cinnamon. The cinnamon is, is needs to be more predominant, but it is apple juice. I mean, it is basically just very nice apple juice. So if this was 85%, almost there. I had to do a little tweaking. I suddenly changed, and I don't have a bottle of this one because this one is currently in a keg. So this was 2020. 2021, I started to make this recipe more. Following the same protocol, the only difference I, I changed to was, I've pretty much stuck with the K1V1, um, ultimately. It just works really well for this recipe. And again, like I said down here, I was like, ah, I was scared off by it, but then I realized I liked it. After I switched to the uh, QA23, I realized I liked it. So K1V1 has been the main character here. This recipe is the same thing, uh, Pink Lady Apples, Gala Apples, Fuji Apples, and um, I upped my cinnamon stick values by one per gallon. I also, the, this thing is a little bit tough to, well, keep the AB, it's tough to keep the ABV down whenever you are adding apple juice, which this had part apple juice, part water in the base. So let's say for a five gallon recipe, this is my, my penultimate recipe that I would recommend you make um, if you're gonna make an apple and cinnamon mead. It's right here. Use half water, half apple juice, and I'll tell you why. If you want this to stay lower ABV, you're gonna have to use half and half. Because if you go full apple juice, your starting gravity just with the apple juice alone is gonna be 1050, which is gonna kick you up to 6%. And then you add honey on top and you're gonna be kicking up to 12, 13. I wanted something that's more in the range of seven to nine, kind of at max. So halving it allowed me to bump that gravity down. So we start at like 1050, or sorry, 1025 um, starting gravity with your juice. You add um, basically about a pound and a half of honey relative per gallon. Um, and then your variations of apples are different kinds. I use one third of each kind. Cinnamon sticks, which I haven't experimented with the different kinds of cinnamon. I use actual cinnamon sticks that I buy. And um, then Q, not Q2E, q 2 K1V1, back sweeten after you stabilize with more honey, whatever kind of honey you want, and you have this. One thing I didn't mention here that's important is when you add your apples in, I have found that adding them in in the secondary fermentation and or post fermentation stage is the best way to get the most apple character out of them. Now, I also enjoy and have found success with stabilizing and then adding my fruit in. Normally this leads to more actual fruit character retained because fermentation can sometimes pull and change those characters. So I actually stabilize and then add my apples in and it, it tends to work well. This is a carbonated version. Essentially, I just, I updated my recipe from 2020 and said, I want this to be a little sweeter, a little more cinnamony, and I want to carbonate it. So this is force carved, which is why it's in this glass. I don't have a bottle. This isn't a keg currently. Oh yeah, I love this. Again, very much so like this. Bright apple juice. Um, way more cinnamon profile to be found here. It's kind of coating your mouth, has a mouthfeel aspect. The, the yeast have done a great job of keeping and retaining the, the um, quality of the honey here, which I really like. And ultimately, I just think it being at that seven, uh, I think this is setting at eight or 9% at this point, it's just a good level. It's very crushable. It's just, it's very good. I mean, it looks good. 
It's clear. The carbonation adds a bit of gripping mouthfeel. I'm a huge fan of this. All right, so I know some of you are going, well, I can't actually keg something because I don't have a keg. So if you want to bottle carb this to add carbonation, it's not going to be the same exact same thing as the recipe on screen. You're going to have to change a few things. So I'm going to update it right now and show you what you have to change to make this recipe close to what mine is in a bottle carb fashion. Essentially, you can't stabilize and add your fruit. You're going to have to go ahead and add your fruit into that post uh, fermentation stage and or secondary. You will have to use a non-fermentable sugar to back sweeten to your liking. And then of course a priming sugar to actually get the bottle carbonation, which again, please use a calculator. Don't try and just do this uh, without a calculator, but you will get a similar ish uh, product to what I have here. You're just not going to have as much honey character retention or sweetness from that. One thing I learned through, again, this progression, fruit skins, especially with apples, with the edible wax thing, can put off, when fermented, can put off like a little bit of a, um, a, what is it, like, plasticky sort of taste and aroma, or um, it was, what was the other term? Someone said it, it was like, uh, baby wipe a little bit like of that kind of aroma, which when I first heard that I shared this mead with somebody, I shared a, a different version where I did not wash the apples with somebody. And he said, Hey, this kind of smells kind of funky. I was like, what do you mean? And so he explained that right there that it had like this baby wipe kind of aromatic to it. And I, I was able to sense it then. And then I did some research come to find out edible wax fermentation equals weird aroma slash flavor. So this version has cleaned apples, cleaned is relative. So what you do is normally you take and put them in a little bit of not hot, super hot water, but water to make that wax kind of melt enough. And then you can kind of just clean them up. I chop mine um, alongside my apple juice. I basically just cut them into eights or whatever the size is there, get rid of the cores and get rid of the seeds so you don't have to deal with that. Put them in there, and normally in the secondary. Uh, secondary fermentation is where you can get most of that apple character pronouncing, and um, there's some tannic value that comes from the skins. Varietal varietals of apples will help you get different characters, which is why I do that. This one's super good. Cinnamon stick in for like two weeks. I'll put all these instructions up here. This is my penultimate recipe. I feel very good about this. I've been, um, my next, well, I will say my next step is to try and bring the cost down. And so I'm kind of experimenting a little bit with apple juice concentrate. I don't know that I'm going to go very far with it because I've had problems in some regards with it, um, getting the same results. Apple skins have just been really helpful. Fermenting on the real fruit, apple juice, all of that is super helpful. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this progression. My whole goal with this is to show you that this is a five year long recipe development. Essentially, it's taken a long time for me to get to this point. And it's taken batches and batches. I've probably made this mead 20 times at this point. And, um, you know, these are, these are kind of stair-stepping milestones of where I've grown. I hope you've enjoyed getting to see this progression. This just takes time. And, um, it's important that you keep trying new things in order to develop your recipes. So do that. Don't just make things once and give up on it, especially if it doesn't turn out the way you want. Tweak it, make small changes or large changes if you need to and try again. So thanks again. I'll see you next time in a future video. Cheers.